Football is a violent sport, which is what makes evaluating players still in high school so difficult. With how prevalent injuries are at all levels, it's tough to predict who will actually make it to the NFL. That's what makes things like the USA Today All-USA High School Football Team so intriguing. These young men were among the best of the best, but many of them never found NFL greatness. Today, we're taking a look back at the 1987 USA Today All-USA team and seeing what happened to all 24 players, starting with the offense. Todd Marinovich, quarterback. Marinovich's story is well documented at this point. His dad, Marv, played for USC's national championship winning team in 1962, and his mom, Trudy, was a star high school swimmer. Her brother, Craig, was a stud QB at USC as well. Marv became the first strength and conditioning coach for the NFL when he joined the Raiders staff, and he would use the techniques he learned to train Todd. Marinovich quickly became one of the best high school quarterbacks the world has ever seen, with some in the media referring to him as, quote, America's first test tube athlete. It would later be revealed that all that pressure led Marinovich to start abusing drugs and alcohol during his high school years. He would eventually sign with USC after getting offers from nearly every school in the country. At times, Marinovich excelled on the gridiron. Trojan fans will fondly remember the drive where Todd led the team on a 91-yard march down the field to clinch a comeback win against Washington State. However, off-the-field issues, including an arrest for cocaine possession during his sophomore season, led to him never reaching the heights many expected of him. Still, he was selected by the Raiders with the 24th pick in the 91 draft, a few spots above Brett Favre. His substance abuse issues continued into the pros, and he was out of the NFL by 1994 after playing in a total of eight games. He'd play in the CFL, attempt an NFL comeback, and play in the Arena League over the next several seasons, but his career was largely seen as a bust. That said, the flashes of excellence made it clear that his talent was immense, if only he'd been able to overcome his upbringing. These days, he's living in California and working on his art. If you want to learn much more about Marinovich, I'd highly recommend The Marinovich Project, a 2011 ESPN documentary. Kevin Williams, running back. Williams was widely considered the best running back in his senior class and decided to leave Texas and attend UCLA. His first season was relatively solid off the bench, but an ankle injury hampered his sophomore season. Thankfully, he was back in the lineup and starting in 91. He led the team in rushing with 1,089 yards and 8 touchdowns as the Bruins approved to 9-3. As a senior, he still led the team, but only managed around 600 yards as UCLA fell back to 6-5. The Broncos drafted him in the 93 draft, and he made the Packers roster after Denver cut him. He played in three games for the team, but it doesn't look like K-Dub racked up any stats. He'd later sign with Frankfurt, Germany, and help the team win the 1995 World Bowl. I've been unable to find out much about his post-playing career, but he did sadly pass away in 2012. Russell White, running back. White was a standout running back in California, racking up nearly 6,000 yards and 94 touchdowns over his high school career. He decided to keep it local and sign with the Cal Golden Bears. Unfortunately, his SAT score wasn't high enough and he was ineligible as a freshman. After receiving tutoring and being diagnosed with dyslexia, he suited up for the team in 1990. During his three years, White rushed for over 1,000 yards every season and broke double-digit touchdowns twice. He was a consensus All-American in 91 and made the All-Pac-10 team all three seasons. The Rams picked him up in the third round of the 93 draft, and he appeared in five games for the team, mostly as a kick returner. White then spent time with the Packers and 49ers, but never suited up for a regular season game with either team. By 2003, he was working as an athletic director and football coach at a California high school and has been working as a coach for the last 20 years. Chuck Webb, running back. Webb broke his leg when he was 10 years old and was told by doctors that a future in sports probably wasn't in the cards. Not only did he prove them wrong by excelling on the football field, but Webb was also a track star who boasted 4.3 speed in the 40 during high school. He somewhat surprisingly decided to head to Tennessee for college ball to play under Johnny Majors. Webb redshirted his freshman season and started his follow-up campaign backing up star back Reggie Cobb. During the season, Cobb was kicked off the team after failing a drug test and Webb became the lead back. He only started five games, but he finished the season with 1,236 yards, putting him second in the SEC in rushing behind Emmett Smith. Webb started the next season with a bang, rushing for 131 yards against Colorado. However, an ACL tear in the first quarter of the Vols game against Pacific ended his season. 
After that year, Webb decided to skip the rest of his college career and not risk further injury before heading to the NFL. The Packers made him a third round pick that season, but injury issues largely kept him off the field. Webb retired after the 92 season after seeing the field in only two games. I haven't found much official about his post-playing career, but did find rumors on various discussion boards saying he spent time working as a youth coach, police officer, and construction worker. Mike Lavorio, Offensive Line Interestingly, Lavorio isn't the only player on this team from Gateway High School in Monroeville. We'll talk about the other guy when we get to defense, but Lavorio went to Pitt for college. He started for three years at the school, helping clear the way for Curtis Martin. It doesn't look like he played at the pro level and was working in environmental restorations as of 2013. Gene McGuire, Offensive Line McGuire played his high school ball down in Florida, but went to Notre Dame for college ball. We don't have great stats from his time with the Fighting Irish. That said, we do know that he played well enough to be selected with the 95th pick in the 92 draft by the Saints. Over the next several years, he'd spend time with the Saints, Bears, Dolphins, and Packers, seeing action in 17 total games. I haven't been able to find out anything about his post-playing career, so be sure to sound off in the comments if you know more. Tony DeLazio, Offensive Line there's not much info about DeLazio on the internet. He went to Pitt for college, but I couldn't find any concrete stats. It looks like he might have gotten into car sales after wrapping up his playing career, though that could be another Tony DeLazio. Brian Jacobs, Offensive Line Again, not a ton of info here to go on. Jacobs played at UCLA, though I'm not completely sure how well he did. It looks like his two daughters would later play volleyball at UCLA and Michigan, while his son Jack plays quarterback for Fresno State as of 2024. Ed King, Offensive Line King played his college ball at Auburn, where he became a two-time All-American and two-time All-SEC selection at Offensive Guard. King was selected in the second round of the 91 draft by the Browns. He made the All-Rookie team that season and played for six years between the Browns and Saints. He'd play one last season for the Birmingham Thunderbolts in the XFL, though he only made the practice squad. King then spent several years coaching at various levels until retiring in 2014. Derek Brown, Wide Receiver Brown moved to Florida for high school ball and then jumped to Notre Dame alongside Gene McGuire. The 6'6 tight end racked up 900 yards and 8 touchdowns in his four seasons with the Fighting Irish, making the All-American team in 91. The Giants then selected him 14th overall in the 92 draft. Over his seven seasons in the NFL, he recorded 400 yards and one touchdown, overcoming a collapsed lung in 1995. After 2000, he moved permanently to New York and is seemingly spending the bulk of his time taking care of his two kids. Ronnie Johnson, wide receiver. I've been unable to find out any info about Johnson's college or post-playing career. He did go off for 1,043 yards during the 1986 season at Lamarck High School. That team was notable for going on a deep playoff run following the tragic death of their head coach Hugh Massey in a car accident 48 hours before the first game of the postseason. If you know more about Johnson, please share it below. Chris Gardaki, kicker. Gardaki was his high school's quarterback, punter, and kicker, but would focus on the latter two during his time at Clemson. He would make the All-ACC and All-American teams in 89 and 90 before going on to a long NFL career. Gardaki was selected in the third round of the 91 draft by the Bears and would switch to punting full-time. He played until 2006, led the league in punting yards twice, made the Pro Bowl in 96, the All-Pro team in 96 and 2000, and won the Super Bowl XL with the Steelers. Notably, he never had a punt block during his entire career. Gardaki is probably best remembered for a 2000 incident where he was tackled by Steelers linebacker Joey Porter while playing for the Browns. After shaking off the hit, Gardaki looked to the Steelers sideline and flipped head coach Bill Cowher the bird two times as he walked off the field, which was caught on live television. After retiring, it looks like he's mostly spent time working for various nonprofits around South Carolina. And now for the defense. Todd Collins, linebacker. Collins' older brother Brent also made the All-USA team in 1985, and the younger Collins would follow his brother to Georgia. However, injuries kept him on the sideline as a freshman. Todd then decided to transfer to Tennessee, but was only there for a semester before heading to Carson Newman and joining his brother once again. The duo helped the Eagles to the 1989 NAIA National Championship, and Todd was picked in the third round of the 92 draft. He played with the Pats until 1998, starting the majority of games he was healthy and posted solid, if unspectacular, numbers. In 99, he'd leave to play for the Rams for a few seasons, winning a Super Bowl in 2000. New England also has to be pretty happy with that deal as they were given the 199th pick in the 2000 draft as compensation, which they used to draft a guy you might know, Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. 
As of 2020, Collins was living back in Tennessee, leading a seemingly normal life. Tommy Jeter, defensive line. Jeter would stay in Texas to play for the Longhorns. I wasn't able to track down any official stats, but he did make the second team all SWC team in 1991 before the Eagles picked him in the third round in the 92 draft. Jeter was a rotation defensive tackle for Philly for three seasons before playing one last season with Carolina in 96. It looks like he moved back to Texas and his son played Division II football for the Colorado School of Mines. Mike Lustick, defensive line. I haven't been able to find much about Lustick's career at Washington. He certainly played alongside Steve Entman on the defensive line because he was a Pac-10 All-Academic selection in 92. Other than that, I've only found articles saying he was a highly regarded recruit. If you're a Husky fan, feel free to sound off in the comments, but my current assumption is he was solid and then just moved on to a normal life. Tim Cromarty, defensive line. Again, not a ton of info available for Cromarty. We know he played for Auburn through 92 and participated in the Senior Bowl, but there's not much else to go on. I hate to sound like a broken record, and it's going to happen quite a bit more, but Tigers fans, let us know in the comments if you know anything about him. Randy Hall, defensive line. Tell me if you've heard this one before. There is not a ton of info available for Hall. We know he was a top prospect on both sides of the ball and went to Tennessee for college. A few posts I found on message boards suggest he had lingering back issues that kept him from playing much, but that's not an official source. There does appear to be a LinkedIn profile for someone that seems to be our guy that says he's been working as a high school teacher for the last 25 years in Tennessee. Mario Johnson, defensive line. Like a lot of these defensive guys, it's tough to find good stats for Johnson. He did play at Missouri, even grabbing three carries in 1990 despite playing defensive line. He was selected in the 10th round by the Jets in the 92 draft. He played in 14 games in New York, grabbing two sacks, and then spent one year in New England, but he was out of the NFL after the 93 season. Unfortunately, I've been unable to find anything about his post-playing career. Curtis Bray, linebacker. Bray's father and uncle played pro football at various levels, so it wasn't a huge surprise when he became a star high school player. During his senior season, he was the first defensive player to win the Gatorade National High School Football Player of the Year. Bray kept it local and played linebacker for Pitt. He was solid for the Panthers when healthy, but endured several injuries during his final two seasons with the school. Instead of trying to play pro ball, he jumped into coaching. He worked as a position coach at Villanova, Pitt, Temple, and Iowa State. Sadly, Bray passed away in 2014. Mike Chelansky, linebacker. Chelansky went across the country to attend UCLA. As always, there aren't great college stats available for defensive players, but we do know that he had four sacks as a senior and made the 91 all pac 10 second team. The big man was injured ahead of the NFL Combine and ultimately went undrafted in 93. However, that wasn't the end for Chelinski as he was picked up by the Eagles as a free agent. He quickly became a rotation player for the defensive line, playing in 24 games across two seasons. Unfortunately, a gnarly knee injury took away his entire 94 season and likely set back his development. He then started seven games for the Jets in 96 before spending time with Miami and Detroit to end his career. As of 2021, Chilinski was retired and living the dad lifestyle after several years working in employment screening. Baron Jackson, defensive back. All right, this one is a little fuzzy. As of 2020, Jackson held the high school record for career interceptions with 62. That means he averaged about 16 a season over his four-year career. He would then start his college career at Pitt and was seemingly named a freshman All-American. However, Jackson would soon transfer to Southern in Louisiana, where he earned his degree. Take this with a hefty grain of salt because I couldn't confirm it with an official source, but a few message boards claimed he was shot while playing at Pitt, which led to him transferring and not playing anymore. Either way, I've been unable to track down further information, so if you know more, please share it below. Arnold Law's defensive back. Law played at Arizona State for three seasons, though I haven't been able to find any official stats for him. Other than that, I don't know anything else about the DB outside of knowing he recorded a single tackle against Utah in 91. If you know more, Share it in the comments. Graylin Johnson, defensive back. Johnson was originally slated to attend Notre Dame, but decided to switch to Texas after accusing the fighting Irish coaches of, quote, lying to him about whether his scholarship depended on his SAT score. Once he got on campus, it looks like the six foot four defensive back switched to receiver. He recorded three catches for 34 yards in 1990, but that's all the stats we have. I'm not sure what he's been up to since leaving school, as he seemingly faded into obscurity in the decades since. Ron Dale, punter. Dale actually preferred baseball growing up, but his foot took him to USC where he punted for three seasons. He averaged 40.2 yards per punt over those years, showing it wasn't all hype. 
It doesn't look like he tried to play at the pro level, instead spending three seasons playing minor league baseball as a relief pitcher. He left the game behind in 94, but wasn't finished with public life. In 2009, he appeared in an episode of Pawn Stars. The next year, he would start making appearances on his brother's show, American Restoration, totaling 41 appearances over the next four years. These days, it looks like he's spending the bulk of his time restoring old bicycles.